Hey all, Patrick here. Um, we're going to do a short tutorial today on how to containerize a Python application in a multi-stage build process. Um, so, okay, why would you want to do this? Um, essentially, you know, in when you're developing an application, you want access to all sorts of tools. You want access to your shell, you want access to pip install so you can install dependencies. Um, unfortunately, those um, like affordances, those, those binaries, everything that you use, at that stage becomes a huge liability later when you put your app into production. So if you, um, you know, when you have a running um, application in production, you don't necessarily want there to be shells um, or, uh, you know, pip, which can install arbitrary code into that environment. Um, so essentially what we're going to do today is um, we're going to um, create a small application with one dependency. We're going to, um, you do a multi-stage build process, which basically means we're going to um, we're going to use pip and all you know all these other tools to to set up the application. Um, but then in the last stage, um, we will copy the virtual environment that we used to, we created in the those first steps over to a much more stripped down image. Okay, so chain guard images, the Python latest image. Um, which will be much more secure. It won't have access to those login shells, all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, but first, before um, before we get going, I just want to give you a little sense of, um, you know, just, it, it's a little abstract when I say, oh, it doesn't have access to login shells. But um, let's just run quickly the um, standard Python image that you get on Docker, just Docker run Python, um, versus the ChainGuard image version. Um, so let's just try that now and you'll get a little sense of. So I have downloaded um, the uh, Python uh, image already. So we're just going to quickly run it. Um, so we're going to type uh, Docker and this will want this will if you don't have the image already on your machine, this command will will download it and pull it before it runs it. It'll just take a little longer than you might see on my machine. Um, so let's do that uh, Docker run flag it and let's say we want to use the python image and then i'm going to give it a command which is just bash you notice um, using this python image um, you can log in to the bash shell and do you know as root and do basically whatever you want but more importantly there's a whole lot you know contained here so you you know you can do pip do pip version so pip is contained in this um, and so on. Um, so not you neither want the shells nor do you want these um, tools that will allow you know arbitrary code to be downloaded onto the machine um, when you're in production. Um, so let's do a little comparison now. So I'm going to go out of this environment. So we're back in my Z Z shell, and we will uh, now do that with a chain guard image. So um, so let's do Docker run it and we'll use the chain guard image that I pulled earlier so cgr.dev slash chain guard slash python um, and this is the image the latest python latest image that's intended for production uh, and we'll do the same with it we'll add bash to the end you'll notice now it says okay command not available because there are no shells in this um, python latest image um, you know you can there is an entry point for python because that's kind of necessary um, but in terms of excess stuff, in terms of pip and all these things that are actually not needed to run your application, they won't be present. Okay. So, uh, so that's a little bit of a practical demonstration. Let's go ahead and, um, uh, grab some code. That's going to be our demonstration application. Um, so if you go to, um, this little prepared link that we have. So if you open your browser and go to go dot chain guard dot dev forward slash time teller. Okay. We'll bring you to a GitHub repository for this um, tutorial. Um, and it will have our demonstration application and the Docker file that we're going to use. So go ahead and let's clone it. Uh, clone it to my machine. Okay, so I'm going to go into my projects folder because, you know, I'm a very tidy person. I keep all my projects in my projects folder. I'm going to do git clone to grab this code. OK, 
it turned things off there for a second while I entered my um, SSH key. And we should have on our machine a nice repository that we just created. Um, Okay, it's called multi-stage build tutorial. So we'll go into that. Um, and now um, this is getting a little large. So we'll zoom out a bit. Okay, we have a little more room there. All right, so um, what do we have in, in this um, project? So you're going to see a Docker file. Um, you're going to see um, our application, our example application. Um, you're going to see the requirements.txt. Um, and there's also some tutorial files for the written tutorial. So um, the ones where we're going to be using right now are this main.py file. That's going to be our example application. Um, and we are also going to have a Docker file that we're going to use for the multi-stage build in a minute. So let's go ahead and, um, uh, and set up the um, dependencies for our example application. Uh, so let's do um, Python hyphen M to give Python a special command. And we're going to use the VENV virtual environment command, VENV. And we're not going to be very exciting. We have to pass it a name for our virtual environment. We're going to call it VENV virtual environment. Okay. Um, so go ahead and write. So that's Python flag M um, VENV space VENV. Go ahead and run that. Should create a virtual environment for us. Hopefully this is a somewhat familiar workflow for you. And we'll start a, we'll, we'll activate the virtual environment. So we'll do source, then virtual environment, bin, activate. Okay. And you'll see the uh, terminal change. Now we, um, we are loaded into this new virtual environment we've created. Um, and there's only one, I'll show you the application now in a second. But there's only one dependency for the application, which um, this, basically what this application is going to do and I can uh, quickly pull up the application in VS Code. Okay, so basically what this application does is it um, it tells you that the um, time in ten randomly chosen time zones, and um, it also tells you the time on your own host machine and the time in UTC. Okay, in nice little formatted output. So. A lot of this is, um, you know, just to make the, uh, the time zones come out looking pretty. Um, we'll show you the output in a second now that we've, um, we're going we're to install our dependency and we'll show the output in a second. But basically, it's a little application um, that prints some stuff out to the terminal um, and it has one dependency, which is this PYTZ, so Python time zone library um, that handles a lot of the information related to our time zones. Okay. So, uh, and that's kind of all prepared for you, so you shouldn't have to edit it or do anything. It should just be in there in that main.py file. I'm going to close that. And now um, we'll go ahead and install the dependency for that. And we'll, then I'll show you the output. So it's going to be pip install r requirements.txt. You know, and if you're curious what's in that requirements.txt file, I'm just going to cat it. There you go. It's just it's just PYTZ, uh, PITS, whatever you want to call it, and a specific version of it. Okay, so um, should be installed. So now we can run the application. You know, we just want to make sure everything works before we do the um, the multi-stage build in that we containerize our application. So let's go ahead and run Python main.py. Of course, some systems. You know, if you're working with certain systems, they might be Python three. You know, so I'm using Python. Um, has a shim to my Python 3 installation, but you know, your mileage may vary. You might have Python 3 or whatever, but I'm running, running doing Python main.py and we should have our dependency installed. So things should work and you'll see, you know, get this nice output. You know, it shows the time zone in UTC, shows the time zone in these different time zones. Uh, in Johannesburg, you know, America, Costa Rica. Okay. It's just a little example application with one uh, dependency. Okay. You know, if we didn't have a dependency, you know, you wouldn't see how the multi-stage build works. So, all right. So, um, let's go ahead and, uh, go containerize this application. You know, we've gotten it working. Um, and you'll know, understand it has one dependency. Um, and we use pip to install that dependency. Um, and of course, when you're developing an application, you need access to all of these tools. Um, we're using a shell, 
right now. And we are, uh, we created a virtual environment and we have to use pip to set that virtual environment up. Um, and in fact, we can actually deactivate our virtual environment now. Um, so let's go just do activate. Um, so, cause we won't need it anymore. Um, so now what we're going to do is we'll take a look at the Docker file and I'll kind of explain a little bit of it to you. But basically the philosophy here is we're gonna use two um, images. We're gonna use our development image, which in the first stage is going to, we're gonna grab that image. It's gonna load our application into the, um, into the, the running container. And then we're going to, um, we're going to pip, you know, pip install our dependencies, just like we did right now. Um, it's going to create a venv, you know, virtual environment directory. Um, then we're going to switch over to the much more minimal image. Doesn't have any shells, doesn't have any, um, pip install functionality, anything like that. And we just copy that file over, um, that, that directory, that virtual environment directory over directly. Um, and so we won't, don't need pip anymore at that point. We've, we've abandoned all of those tools because they're a liability and we're, we copy over the prepared environment and then we, um, use our Python, uh, you know, executable in conjunction with that virtual environment to run the application in production. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that Docker file. Okay. So we're going to start, uh, let's just take a look at the Docker file with the VS code things there code docker file i'll kind of walk you through this so uh, a little larger no thank you so you'll notice um the image we pull here is python dev from our the chain guard image is python dev so that's the image that we provide that has a little more development functionality so it does have those shells does have pip install okay we set up a couple of environment variables. Um, then the, the things get a little more interesting. So um, we change the working directory. And here um, you'll see that um, we we load up a virtual environment. You know, that's the equivalent of the source um, virtual environment, you know, load, um, load up that binary that loads up the virtual environment that we just did interactively. Um, and then it uses pip install to install our requirements from our requirements.txt file after copying the requirements.txt file into the container. And then, um, then we are going to, um, once we have that environment set up, we switch right over to Python latest, um, which is the production image. Okay. Um, finally, you'll see it copies the, um, the virtual environment that we've set up in the prior step into the new, um, the new container. And then finally we, um, we go ahead and run the application with this by providing the entry point of, um, this main.py file that we ran. Um, so hopefully that makes a little sense and let's just go ahead and run it. Uh, I'm going to close this Docker file now that we've looked at it. Um, so clear the screen. Let's do Docker build dot for this folder we're building from the doc file in this folder let's give it a tag we'll call it time teller because that's the name of our little application gives it a tag we're building so this is the part where i you know sing a little song about octopuses okay now um yeah, that shouldn't take too long depending on your machine um then once you have it we're going to run it so i'm clearing the screen again Docker run and let's do the flag RM. So it, you know, cleans things up after we're done. So hyphen hyphen RM, that'll make sure that it'll clean things up once we run things. So we just clutter up your system. And let's use the tag that we have time teller. Okay. And now this is running in the Docker container. Okay. Now you may not be seeing your own time zone. So there's a line there in the Docker file where you can set your own time zone if you if you'd prefer, you know, to see the correct time zone <laughs> in your own local time, um, you know, it's UTC by default in these containers. So, um, all right. So we net this successfully containerized your application. Um, and what are the advantages here? The advantages are you put this into production. Um, this, this image we've created 
it won't have pip it won't have bash you know you you won't be able to have that um have those kind of liabilities of um of uh a, a, those those um, tools that you don't actually need. You only need them in development. You don't need them in production. Um, and additionally, you'll also notice that you, um, you you like I just tested this image and it's actually zero CVEs right now. So so images based on Wolfie are going to have consistently fewer CVEs than images based on um, you know the standard Python images that you're going to pull um, on any given day. So why don't we check our image um, for CVEs, and then we can also compare with the base, the the default Python image that's available on Docker, um, just to kind of get a comparison. So let's actually let's check the um, the you know the regular Docker run Python image um, first. So let's do we're going to use a tool here, Docker Scout, um, which will um, you know itemize CVEs in images, and it's quite a useful tool. Um, so Docker uh, Scout CVEs, and let's do the Python image first, the regular Python image. And this might take a minute on your machine. I just ran it, so you you know it's indexed, so it may be a little quicker than it is on your machine. You'll notice it's a fair number of issues. I mean, 116 low, uh, too high, um, so a fair a fair number of medium um, issues. Um, in this report that we're seeing. So let's try it on our own image. So Docker Scout um, CVEs Time Teller, which is the image we just created with our multi stage build. And you notice it's a significant reduction in CVEs because of using the chain guard images, which is really nice. Um, and you'll notice there's one, I'm seeing one high, which we can attempt to remediate. And I'll say, you know, running small. Uh, applications like this on any given day, you're probably going to get maybe somewhere, in my experience, maybe between zero, one, a fairly small number of um, of CVEs. And that's a lot easier to remediate or to think about the security implications of that than it is to <laughs> deal with a hundred and some odd Im uh, CVEs. Um, so that's uh, our tutorial on creating a multi-stage build process using chain guard images in Python. Um, and hope you have a good one.